Welcome to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Fox, Episode 2. Now, spoilers for the MCU. Right, sorry. I accidentally... Okay, this won't take very long. I'm not sure how, to, how that even happened, but here we go. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. And I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. As usual, I recommend videos talking about Easter eggs and such on the show, especially videos made by a new rock star, Screen Rant, Nerdist, Screen Crush. I'm not going to be talking about the recently uploaded trailer for the Suicide Squad, other than it looks amazing. I cannot wait for that movie to come out. We knew it was going to be amazing. James Gunn. It's, of course it's going to be amazing. Now, in the previous Leon, it ends with the wink that John Walker gives, and just, oh, you just, you just want to, he's, he's so obnoxious. I really appreciate that we get a lot of humanizing of him in this episode. Let's see. And how he's like, he's a little insecure before going out there, and others have pointed out Steve was as well. Everyone in the world expects me to be something, and I don't want to fail them. But yeah, you know, I, they, they, he, he came off as really obnoxious at the end of last episode when we first saw him, and now they're really humanizing him, so they are, like, I don't think the audience, I'm, I'm glad we didn't see him in the, here in the locker room before we saw him in the uniform, because it really is, like, now we know that deep down inside he is sometimes insecure and he's you know he doesn't want to let people down but when he actually you know when he puts on the uniform and goes out there he comes off as really obnoxious and just so it's it's a great kind of yeah I, I feel like they handle that really well and John's trying to figure out how to really come across like the new Captain America in a, uh, what's it called? Yeah, be, be compelling as convincing. Star Spangled Man with a Plan and all that, it's always been in the job description. That is 100% correct. This is basically the USO shows that Steve had to do. And the marching band is playing this version of the USO show from th the first Captain America movie. And fans are taking selfies with John Walker. And, you know, he, he comes on and says, good morning, America. The, the thing. He said the thing. It's, it's the name of the show that he's on, which we see right after. And, you know, one of, one of the Easter egg videos pointed out, well, you know, Disney owns that show now, so... Or I guess the network, whatever, I don't, I'm not sure, whatever. But they also, you know, they point out, you know, that's maybe part of it, but it's also kind of invoking Reagan. You know, it's morning in America again. Good morning, America. It's, it's a good kind of, excuse me, it's, it's telling us what kind of Captain America he's going to be. And just like almost all of the other MCU heroes, I mean, at least Spider-Man had one for a while, but even that's not, you know, John doesn't have a cigarette in. The helmet comes off almost immediately. I forget, did he, did they say his name at the end of the last episode? I, I don't remember, but, you know, now, he, you know, even if you didn't, even if you knew his name but not his face, now everybody knows his name and his face. And Buck, Bucky is watching the interview and clearly hates it. And he is apparently still just allergic to furniture. He sleeps on the floor. He sits on the floor. Here's what you're not going to do. You're not going to come here with your overextended life and tell me about my rights. And 
yeah, I, I really like the, the conflict between the, yeah, this kind of uneasy. Bucky blames Sam for John Walker having the shield. How do you know about Gandalf? I read The Hobbit in 1937 when it first came out. And so the, East, I think at least two of the Easter egg videos pointed out 1937, that was when it came out in, like, the UK. It only came out in America, 1938. So apparently Bucky was just such a fantasy novel fan that he got. And, and did they also say it was only, like, 1,500 books for in, in the UK? That's not exactly a lot, considering how many people live in the UK, you know. But no, apparently, you know, he, he must have either traveled to Europe or like had one ordered just yeah it's i can imagine it's just that like the people writing the episode they only did like half their due diligence when they fact checked and it was like the hobbit first came out in 1937 oh gotcha 1937 and they didn't know in the uk you know i i don't know i will always love the banter between falcon and bucky one of the easter egg people said they're basic or, or maybe it was a comment i don't know but anyway the, the banter between the two of them is basically what they're like when they're going on press tours as well. I haven't seen a lot of that, but I do, you know, yeah, they are, they are really great together, the, the two of them, in, in character and out. And Falcon and Bucky both go on the mission. Right, as a really, really quickly, I think I said about episode one that the, the, to Torres, who might become the next Falcon, in the comics apparently that's like he's he he has his genetics spliced with, you know the the Red Wing from the comics, which is an actual Falcon. So that's probably not happening in the MCU. But I do really like that they're, yeah, that's that's probably not happening. But that's that's okay. It if if it was like up to James Gunn, it might. But anyway. The, the, you know, the Captain America movies are somewhat more grounded. Anyway, the, the, yeah, I, th I think I said that, that, that he was the guy being rescued by Falcon in the first episode. I think I got that wrong. Apparently he was the guy in the, in the Humvee who was like with binoculars trying to help out Falcon in, in the sky. I, yeah, got, got that wrong. I have all that on camera, you know that, right? What is it with MCU characters filming embarrassing things that, like, Shuri also got on camera T'Challa, R.I.P., at attacking one of the, you know, one of the suits, the, the one where it's, you know, the, the energy, first it absorbs the energy, then it, you know, releases the energy. Anyway, but but yeah, that is kind of funny. And it's like you know, it's it's too low for a shoot. Which you know, for for those who might not know, it is basically like for a parachute to work, you have to pull it. Well, there I I don't remember the number, but there has to, like, let's say if this is the height you have to be, then you know you pull the chute and it comes out and you slow. You, if you're trying to if you're this high up and you're trying to pull it, it's just not gonna you know it's not gonna yeah, there there needs to be some some distance between you and the ground when you pull the chute. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. And uh, yeah, you know, so so Bucky jumps out again, and and it is kind of funny because you know Steve has done that on occasion, jumped out of a a plane like that. But you know, he he yeah, Bucky isn't quite as graceful about it. Now. And Bucky and Falcon don't agree on how to do the mission. Bucky brings up that in Wakanda he was called White Wolf. They brought up Wakanda and, and his stay there in the first episode. Er, he he did. It's, yeah, I guess in this episode it was Falcon who brought it up, who brought up Wakanda at all. But yeah, you know they they keep bringing it two out of two. That you know once is a coincidence, two is a pattern. I'm joking. That's that's when something unexpected happens. But the no, the the um, I th I think they're they're going to you know by the end of this miniseries maybe he's going to become White Wolf and that you know I I feel like by the end of this show Falcon might be the new 
Captain America, John Walker will have been disgraced or, or something. And, and I guess we'll see if the, if the American government is comfortable with a black man being Captain America. Bucky will be the White Wolf and Torres will be the new Falcon. And also someone pointed out that, one of, one of these direct people pointed out that apparently the kid who, you know, lets, lets them in to talk to uh, Isaiah Bradley, I want to say is his name, that's apparently one of the Young Avengers, so they really are. The, the Young Avengers is going to be a thing. Like, there's a lot of members of the Young Avengers who have straight up appeared or been very heavily implied to appear. You know, we've got the, I'm, I'm pretty sure the next Hawkeye is going to be, you know, Kate, Kate Bishop, Haley Steinfeld. We've got the, you know, Speed and Wiccan from WandaVision. We've got Stature, which is Cassie Lang. Now we have the, the I'm sorry, I forgot his name, but I guess something Bradley. And I feel like there's one or two more, but I can't completely place it right now. But yeah, was that six or something? So, yeah. And Bucky, you know, the, the trucks are already driving fast, but Bucky runs past one of the trucks. We know that he can do that. We saw it in Civil War. And he thinks he found the hostage, but, you know, we already knew from the trailers that's one of the Flag Smashers. Thankfully, they don't spend long before revealing it. Did we see her put on a mask in the first episode? I'm not entirely sure. Probably not. They, they kind of played it as, yeah. I always wanted to do that. And Falcon and Bucky have trouble with the Flag Smashers on the truck, and John Walker joins the fight using the shield and the Captain America theme plays. And... Falcon manages to save Bucky. John Walker throws the shield to save his buddy Lamont. I really appreciate that he's not just one-dimensional and evil. You know, the, the shield is a pretty big, like, you know, throwing away the Captain America shield, you know, and instead of using, and I, I'm not saying throwing it in general, I'm saying like throwing it in a way where it doesn't fly back to you and intentionally doing that. It's like a Jedi throwing his lightsaber away or something, although I guess Jedi's in the in the oh, those movies throw lightsabers away more frequently than we see. anyway but you know and and honestly yeah if he hadn't thrown it like that Lamont would have gotten very seriously injured and it also it, it reminds me a lot of how in the second captain yeah the second captain America solo movie the Winter Soldier where Steve also uses let's see I think he jumps out of the car that Bucky is attacking and because he's like you know, if the, if the shield is here, he's using the shield to go against the the, the road. That, uh, yeah, otherwise he would have gotten injured. John Walker offers Falcon and Bucky a ride. And let's see. And, and at first they, they, you know, yeah, it, at first they don't accept the ride, but eventually. And it, it is, like, legitimately the... the he, John Walker is trying to handle this in the most diplomatic way possible. You know, he doesn't know Sam and Bucky, only their reputations. But he he does like in in the first Captain America Silver movie, Steve says, "Come on, guys, we're all on the same team," and I feel like that's what John Walker is trying to do here. He's like, "Okay, we." We may have gotten off on the wrong foot. I do, you know, he he says I don't want to replace Steve, and the, yeah, you know, it's he he doesn't he's not making fun of them for losing the fight. He's not like saying you were, you know, completely useless there until I showed up. No, he's like, well, that could have gone better. You know, he's he's not putting blame on anyone, and yeah. And John Walker says the big three, just like Falcon did. And the reason John knew where they were was because he tracked Red Wing. And that's, you know, Sam is not really happy about that. And it is like, so the American government thinks that they think that they, they think that they should be able to just track Sam without his knowledge anytime, any place. But they're not gonna, 
help out with his financial situation, despite all he's done for, you know, serving the, the military. And so, yeah. So, so that's a really, and, and I really like Sam's line, a line usually said by the guys with the resources. Again, it's, it's very, it's, it's a really good point. I'm not trying to be Steve. I'm not trying to replace Steve. I'm just trying to be the best Amer Captain America I can be. That's it. And it would be a whole lot easier if Cap's wingmen were on my side. And, you know, he comes so close, but he... Him saying Cap's wingmen, like that... Like, they feel like you didn't earn the right to call us that. You know, you can't just barge in here and pretend... Like, you know, you're, yeah. Let's see. And the safe house, people are trying to help. And that really, the, what was it they said? Chicken liver or something? That is, wow. They're calling you Robin Hood. And, and you know, Carly reads the, the, the text. You took what was mine. I'm going to find you and kill you. And just... You know, and, and as many have pointed out, that's almost definitely the power broker sending that text. And that's, yeah, you, yeah, it's it's very, very exciting and enticing. I like that before we saw John, we saw the shield when they were fighting on the trucks. And, you know, as others have pointed out, it's an awesome fight scene. You know, it, we're running out of ways to say that MCU action scenes are incredible. So, yeah, it's just, you know, I... I guess I can just briefly talk about, obvi obviously, as with some of the other MCU fight scenes, it is very much taking a pain, you know, it's, it's, it's hearkening back to the freeway scene in The Matrix Reloaded, and as usual, I feel like there, I, I did used to love that movie, but I, it, I have for many years now been able to accept that it's just not that well paced there's like there's these long blocks of either action or talking and just the, the first movie does a much better job at mixing the two so neither of them overwhelm the other but yeah here you know fighting on top of tra of yeah you know in in uh, nah it's it's not a spoiler people know i'm, I'm just i guess i'm not gonna man name names for the, the reload but Reloaded, you know, there's the one truck and they're fighting and here we have two trucks that are next to each other and there and, and there are more fighters. I, I think they did a really good job and it is this thing of like they, they have to show that these people can do something that normal people can't and you know so for some of them you know, we, Bucky has the super soldier serum. We don't yet know exactly what the Flag Smashers has, have but it seems like it's a good bet that the power broker gave them some sort of serum. And, you know, Falcon has the wings. John Walker is very, very, <clears throat> excuse me, has a lot of training. And, yeah, it's, you know, it, it's a good way to show that they're, they can do things normal human beings can't by fighting atop moving trucks. And Bucky tries to get in by asking for Isaiah. And let's see. And yeah, Carl Lundley, the first black Captain America, and yeah, really loving that they're digging into that. You think you can wake up one day and decide what you want to be? It doesn't work like that. Well, maybe it does for folks like you. I really appreciate how race is constantly coming up and white privilege. And I, I like that they, you know, Isaiah, it's not like this big scene of him, like, showing off. How we see that he's still superhumanly strong is that he throws that, like, it's like a metal box. He throws it, and it gets stuck in the wooden wall. You know, think about how insanely hard you have to throw for for metal to, and, and it's not like this this thin little, it's like the, you know, relatively thick thing that's, yeah. And Isaiah talks some about the abuse he faced. And the cops demand Sam show ID until one of them recognizes him. 
as an Avenger, and Bucky tells him to just show ID, and Sam says, we're just talking, and this is a very common occurrence in America, and a lot of white people would just say, well, why didn't he just do what the cops said? But it, it is... I appreciate that Sam is not just going to take it lying down. And I will just very briefly say, even if Sam had, you know, there are examples where the black people did exactly what the cops told them to. Even tried to do it in... There, there are a couple of cases where... Or, there are cases where the, the, the cop gave contradicting orders and the black guy tried to follow them. And the moment that the, the black guy did the, the, you know, one of the two things that the cop said, not the other one because he can't do both, the cop shoots him. You know, so it's not... But then, you know, it turns out they arrest Bucky for missing a therapy session, point out. It's like missing, you know, like skipping out on your parole officer. And John says he made it so Bucky is no longer going to be in therapy. Look, Dr. Rayner, any relation to Jim Rayner from StarCraft? Isn't that ironic, don't you think? And she's trying to get them to do eye contact, but instead they do the staring contest. It, it goes by a lot faster than the, the, tr the, the trailer, I think, made it seem like I like the way both of them did it. You know, for the trailer, you really want the big moment. But in the show, you know, there's a lot of plot to get to. So, yeah. And Bucky confronts Sam about giving up the shield. And, I, yeah, it's a really great, like, the, the thing of Steve gave you that shield. If you don't use it, or you, you giving it up means that he might have been wrong about you. And if he was wrong about you, maybe he was wrong about me. And, you know, Bucky still, it's extremely painful for him. The, the you know, he, he always has to try to convince himself that he's not the Winter Soldier anymore, that that wasn't him, that he's someone, you know, he is now someone else. And, you know, Isaiah pointed out, it's not that simple. You can't just wake up one day and say, I'm, I am no longer the result of my actions. I'm no longer the result of what other people have done to me. And yeah, I, it is really, really great. And it is this thing, like both Sam and Bucky, they, they're really struggling to live up to what Steve, the, the, the way that Steve would, you know, yeah, Steve basically thought they were they were absolutely incredible, and neither of them feel that way. Sam, because his whole life he's been told, because he's black, he's not he's not as good as a white man, and Bucky because of all the the kills for Hydra. Now I, yeah, I appreciate that John is trying to befriend Sam and Bucky. He really is, yeah. And, and they, they do a really good job of making it believable both as John Walker and, like, actually, yeah, never mind. I, I, have some, I have some notes about that a little later. Anyway, and Sam points out the Sokovia Accords, you know, will, will slow down John Walker, but not Sam and Bucky. And, you know, finally, John basically accepts, you know, we're not going to be friends. A word of advice then, stay the hell out of my way. And as these great people also said, that's not going to happen. There's definitely going to be a, ah, what's it called? Conflict between them later in the miniseries. How much time do we have? None. It's the power brokers, not me. And the flag smasher who stays behind is quickly gunned down. You know, for, for this sort of thing, you kind of, you know, let's see, he had already knocked down, which is also like, holy crap, he must be insanely strong that he knocks down. Anyway, so he blocked their path so they can't drive all the way up to the uh, the plane. 
I think the reason the guy, I, I think he knows that he's going to be gunned down. He's, I mean, it seems like the flag, smash, flag smashers are basically zealots. You know, they're not, that's not, not in the, not in the way that a zealot is someone fighting for Caecilius, but I mean, in the, in the dictionary definition, you know, they're, they're zealous in their beliefs. But yeah, I feel like because he ran right at them, they had to shoot him and that slowed them down. Where if he hadn't run at them, let's say that several of them tried to run past him. If even one of them gets past him, maybe they can't stop the... Maybe they can't physically reach the, the plane before it's in the air. But if they start shooting, it's not super difficult to force a plane to land. Especially if you're not that you know, married to the concept of the people inside the plane surviving. But if, you know, if you have a gun and you want a plane to land, you know, and the power broker did text, I'm going to kill you. So I, I feel like, you know, but because he ran right at them, like if one of them tried to run ahead, he might get shot by his buddies. But because they, they have to be busy shooting him, then the plane gets enough, but yeah, and it's, again, Power Broker, he is not messing around. He wants them dead. You know, they barely had any forewarning before the, the men got there, so yeah. And yeah, seems like the Power Brokers, how the Flag Smashers have superhuman abilities. Based on the text message, I guess either the Power Broker expected to be giving them orders, or maybe they straight up stole the serum. And there's also a theory that the, excuse me, that the medication, supposed medication that, you know, I th I th yeah, earlier in this episode, they, you know, it was said they are stealing medication. That's what's in the trucks. It's possible that it's, you know, hidden as medication, but it's actually power broker super soldier serum. Superpowered power broker super soldier serum. Try saying that five times fast. And Bucky brings up they need leads for the flag smashers, and you know, yeah, they're gonna need to talk to Zemo. And the episode ends with us seeing Zemo sitting in his cell, and yeah, I I really like how. It kind of seems as though every episode, I, I'm guessing maybe not the very last, although I guess if it's in the very last, it's going to be like a tease for one of the movies or one of the other miniseries. But anyway, so far, two episodes in, both episodes end with the introduction of, um, you know, certainly John Walker is already a major character, and it seems like Zemo is going to be one as well, so... Let's see, who do, who else are we expecting to show up? I guess maybe the Power Broker is going to be introduced at the very end of an episode. I guess that might be it for the major characters that we know are going to be on the show, but yeah. And considering how powerful and useful Red Wing is, I appreciate that they might have needed to take it out to make Sam less OP. I do wonder if we're going to get another Red Wing before the end of the show. I guess, certainly with it gone, you know, maybe they can't track Sam anymore. They certainly... Yeah, because the, you know, other than that, the time that, you know, yeah, the, the trucks, they track Red Wing. Then they meet them again at, like, I don't know, uh, as a police station, maybe, or something, they, you know, basically, John made so that they no longer, have, that Bucky no longer has to be in therapy, and, you know, yeah, it makes a lot of sense that he, he probably said, if you arrest, if you manage to arrest Bucky, let me know, I want to talk to him, so... It, one could imagine that he's not going to be able to find them as easily with, yeah. I feel like they did a really good job making John Walker sympathetic and making the rift between him and Falcon and Bucky be credible, despite John trying to make sure all three of them work together. Several of the things that John Walker says and does make sense for him to say and do. So far, I'm not sure he's done or said anything that I didn't think makes, made sense for him to do at all. 
I don't think he's done anything at all that I didn't think made sense for him to do. Since he's trying to put on a strong facade, he's worried that if he shows his insecurity in front of other people, they're going to lose faith in Captain America. But because he's coming on strong, where Steve was confident but also humble, he comes off like a jerk to Sam, Bucky, and the audience. And, yeah, it, it is this thing, like, with Steve, there was this very clear, like, I don't think Steve would have accepted, like, yeah, let's hypothetically say that in this episode, the part of John Walker would have played, been played by Steve Rogers. He would not have been okay with them tracking Sam without Sam knowing. You know, he, he would have demanded that they delete the, the program or whatever, you know, and yeah. So, so it, you know, yeah. And, and the, let's see, the, the, I feel like maybe also with Walker, there's this sort of sense that he wants, he thinks that the reason they're stopping the Flag Smashers is because that's what he's been told to do. Where Steve would be doing it because he thought it was wrong what the Flag Smashers were doing. You know, and yeah, like hypothetically, let's say that in Captain America 2, the solo movie, if that had been John Walker instead of Steve Rogers, there's some chance that he wouldn't have minded Hydra. He would have just been, oh, okay, so it's Hydra, not S.H.I.E.L.D. giving the orders. Gotcha. You know, where, who do I attack next? You know. I like how parts of John Walker's uniform are similar to Steve's, such as the helmet. You get a sense that the people in the, the, in the U.S. government behind it are trying to make it seem like he's just the new Captain America, preserving the status quo, as it were, which, again, is not exactly something that Sam and Bucky are wild about. You know, the, the status quo... You know, Hydra being taken down, that was a pretty big blow to the status quo. And Sam was, uh, you know, Sam, Sam never had a problem with that. He just wanted to be sure that they, you know, he, he said, the people who shoot at you usually end up shooting at me. So when do we start, you know? And actually, sorry, that some of that might have been from Civil War. Anyway. And, and you know, Bucky is obviously very relieved that Hydra was taken down, even though he himself didn't have a huge role. You know, he, he was trying to stop Steve, but that was because of mind control. And I guess near the end, just stubbornness, when he's punching him in the face, screaming, you're my mission. But the, the anyway, you know, it's, yeah, I think there's a chance if John Walker had been in that situation, you know, these are, these are some of the defining moments for Steve Rogers as Captain America. And John Walker does not seem like he would have lived up to them. You know, in, in the first Captain America movie, ah, I'm afraid I don't remember his name, but the... Now I don't remember the actor's name. Anyway, he says, he's big, he's strong, he takes orders well, he's a soldier to where, you know, ah... Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name either. Responds, he's a bully. And that's basically, yeah, you know, the the new... John Walker is essentially a bully. Or he's closer to being a bully than Steve would ever be. The therapy scene was funny. I'm trying to figure out whether I feel like her using couples counseling methods is a homophobic joke or not. Like, like... If the if the show is saying, you know, ah, oh, it's, it's it's almost like they're gay, and as if that would be a bad thing, a lot of body comedies bring up that a number of men are uncomfortable with having male friends. That doesn't mean that the jokes regarding that are necessarily homophobic. I mean, there's not really a. I don't know. I'm I'm not one hundred percent. Maybe I'll I'll think more about it and and maybe bring it back up in one of these later videos on the yeah I like the the slightly altered version of the song the Star Spangled Man with a plan playing at the start of this episode 
it kind of made it feel like some people are pretending that this is still just Captain America. But it is this slightly distorted version. You know, it's it's the the Yeah, you know, you yeah, I really quite like that. This episode also has more character than action. I'm that is still positive. And, you know, it is still, it's, it doesn't feel like a TV show, at least not an old TV show. It feels the size of the movies. It's just longer and episodic. But, you know, like, hypothetic, like, if you, excuse me, if you were, let's hypothetically say that you took just the action scenes. You took the action scenes from the Captain America solo movies, and then you took the action scenes from this show, and you showed them to someone who didn't know what the movies were, what the show was, I'm not sure they'd be able to tell that the ones from this show are not, were never in movies, you know. Holy crap, Isaiah said that he tore off Bucky's metal arm. You know, Bucky is always, that that's really badass, although... Bucky is always losing that arm. He lost his original during the fall. He lost one to Isaiah. He lost one to Iron Man. And and his line was also, you know, we met. If met, you mean that I whooped your ass, then yeah, badass. And those are my notes. So yeah, super psyched to see where it goes and really loving how, you know, I they, they, you know, Sam and Bucky need someone who knows Hydra, and that's Zemo, and if John Walker had to work with Zemo, you know, there's, there's gonna be a lot of red tape slowing him down where Bucky and Falcon can just go directly to him and talk, you know, I mean, can, people are gonna try to arrest them for it, but they're just gonna, you know, escape, so... But, but yeah, it, it is this, yeah, really, I, I really appreciate that John Walker didn't, you know, hit the ground fighting Sam and Bucky. I really feel like that would have been, a, it would have done a disservice. And, yeah, you know, I can, I can see them becoming bitter enemies later in the miniseries, and now it feels like that makes sense. And yeah, that that is everything that I have to say for this one. So I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoy watching the recording, and I'll catch you next time.